So, new chapter. This chapter is basically about the viewport of Houdini Solaris. And usually when you start Houdini, you will, yeah, you will be directly moved to the build tab. This is the default view of Houdini. And we need to jump to the Solaris desktop. And this is easily, we click here on the build preset and choose the Solaris option. And then we are in the Solaris space. And I will try to uh, describe the viewport counterclockwise that you follow e more easily. What we see first of all is the shelf button area and the shelf button area has become quite empty. Yeah, honestly, we don't need them. Of course, you can create test geometry and sometimes you can or you can add the random man uh, shelf buttons, but they will n mostly not work because they are dedicated to the OBJ space. Better you don't use them. You can also close this. Um, shelf section and of course on the right side of the shelf we can also create some lights and so on but we also don't need them so we can close this entire shelf tool section for now when we move down with our eyes we see the usual um, viewport uh, of Houdini it looks similar to OBJ space but we are currently in lob space for a demonstration I will um, create a new camera and I will create a grid and I will look through the camera so you can choose the camera on the right side of the viewport right here this is always you can always choose the camera that you have selected so when you have multiple cameras um, right here positioned underneath you can choose both one but when you connect only this one you will only see this selected so you can only choose the cameras and lights in this menu that you have selected in the stream or which are part of the stream we delete this camera and use only camera one and we will directly look through camera one we will activate uh, the camera lock so that our view changes are locked and our camera is truly moving so what you can do with the viewport is quite important so you you should move to the camera option itself and then you can easily um, choose the pan and zoom option so you can move into the image or into the um, scene you can yeah drag and drop the the entire image entire viewport um, area of your 3d scene to the position you like you can also go back to the original position you can choose how you want to rotate on mouse position or view uh, center and yeah this is as usual as in obj but we have a hidden option in the pan and zoom window let us say we want to render an image a preview in the viewport and we only want to have a render of a small portion we um, can ch start a preview render when we click on the perspective and we choose our installed um, rendering engines I will choose renderman RIS and as you see I already had an area that I wanted to render and all what you need to do is you need to hold down shift and drag and drop to the position you like and then you can render the area that you want you can go back by um, clicking on the outside so you click on the outside one time and everything will be rendered again so this is very handy and really often overlooked but this is how you can render in a section of your image as i pointed out you can choose the render engine that you want to use inside of this perspective 
um, drop down menu. But here we also have the ability to choose our viewport render settings. So we can choose from different render settings. We can pause the render and we can restart the render. This is heavily important when you want to render a final image um, to the disk uh, with RenderMan. So in, in case you already use the viewport, you have to restart the render to free the RenderMan license um, to be able to render to disk. This is probably important to know. And you can also um, change the viewport setting just by hitting the D hotkey button in the viewport. And here we have our RenderMan viewport risk settings and we can change them yeah, how we like. So those settings will not be stored in the image. They are only for the viewport. Let us say we have a render output right here. We can also choose this render output settings from here. Render settings, ren uh, render render settings. This is the address and this is exactly what we set up here. So we can choose the settings here. We can maybe one bounce and maybe only one sample. So as you see, ah, my sample right here. So only one sample and here. So in that case, when we choose this option, we use the render settings from the stream, from the stage graph. So go back to Houdini OpenGL. When we go further down into the viewport, we see a little hidden uh, menu and we can open this and then we have a snapshot option. So every time when you do a change, so let us say we want to work with this um, version, we can do a snap from it and later we can change we, we, we do some changes that the director is coming to us and say, can you try this? And can you, yeah, in that example, can you unplug the camera? I want to see how it looks. So we can also rotate the camera and can do another snap. And the great thing is we can also go back to this stage. So we can revert the network to this snapshot. So we go back and you see the camera has not changed, but uh, the camera in the viewport has not changed, but our network has changed to the previous version that we have stored in the snapshot. So we can move to different versions of our scene. Um, the most important thing is when you create those images, sometimes Houdini can crash. When this happens, the snapshot window could be corrupted, the database could be corrupted, and this will lead to cr instant crashing of Houdini when you open this window. You can correct this issue when you save the file. I have stored it documents and here we have a new um, folder called galleries and this gallery will store our render gallery as well as those screenshots from the scene or those render images. When we go back to the Houdini viewport, we can close this window for now and we'll, we'll look down further into the scene graph tree. The scene graph tree will show all objects, all placed objects um, in the USD file. So the entire content in the form of an outliner so you see the meshes, the camera, and when we place a light, we will also see a light in here. So, when we move to the right, we see the scene graph details window. The scene graph details window will show all the attributes that are stored in the object itself. So camera position data, rendering data, and so on. Even custom attributes 
will be shown in this scene graph details when you always selected one of these objects right here. So in that example, we see all the mesh attributes. We also have the scene graph layers as a new tab. The scene graph layers is basically when you have a sub layer and when you want to merge it to the root layer itself. So you have some additional option and overview over multiple layers. The next tab is the layout asset gallery. So when you created the component that I will show later, when you create a component, you can store multiple different objects right in here and you can use them to draw and paint those assets into your scene. So similar to a ZBrush or um, 3D code where you have a library of objects and you can place them directly from here, from this gallery into your scene. So on the right side, we have the typical graph and this is the Solaris graph. And here all operations taking place inside of your USD file. So we can create multiple streams, we can branch out streams, but we have to make sure that we not overriding um, the different objects. So this is a very complex topic, but everything happens right in here. On the right side, we have the parameter window, of course, and some additional performance windows and context options, editors, and so on. But they are mostly for rendering. So I will go back to the stage sometimes it switches um, to the other context. What I added for my personal liking is the preset browser from Renderman. So you can add them right here. You can add the preset browser, the texture manager. This is heavily important for Renderman to convert textures and so on. I will show this in a later session. And I also added the life statistics. So you see statistics about what Render Man is using and how much RAM and it helps to analyze your scene and to make it better. So I also added the render scheduler right in here. The render scheduler is heavily important. So when you render an image to the background, you will see the progress in the render schedule. The image is quite fast because we have no shaders and anything, but you see what's happening right in here. Otherwise you would have no indication that the render operation is going on or still going on. So you can also clear the render jobs from here. So of course you can add other menus like you want, but those are the most important ones. We also have a really important menu here on the right side. So when you render an image, you always should activate the co correction toolbar because here you can choose the color space for your viewport. So when you work with ACES, this is how you get the correct preview of your color space. Of course, we can also add the safe area and other options as well and additional construction plane options. But this is the most important one for rendering in the viewport. And of course, you can also use other render engines like Karma. You're not bound to use Renderman. In this tutorial, like I said previously, we use Renderman. So the focus is more on Renderman. So this is the majority of things that you need to know about the viewport and I see you in the next chapter.